Ho, ho, ho! Merry Vlogmas! Here we go, Cash. Come on. Three, two, one. There you go. Buckets, welcome back to the vlog. What is going on? Happy Vlogmas! It's day, day three. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Anyway, so what we had planned on doing yesterday, which was going to the shop and me showing you the new shop, the one with you know no shopmates, just me and well Cash. But I mean, she goes everywhere. So we're gonna do that for sure. But first, we have to stop and see my friends at 3B Saw and Tool because we need a 45 degree bevel router bit. Woo, that is a lot to say. But yeah, we're either gonna borrow one or buy one or something, I don't know. We need it for this table, but for now, let's go ahead and get to 3B Saw and Tool. It's in Oak Park, that's not in Chicago. So we got a little cruise. Maybe we'll do a little time lapse. How does that sound? Let's do it. Later. Boy, oh boy, do I have something to tell you. Turns out I am a complete <laughs> noob when it comes to vlogging because I didn't do anything at 3B Saw and Tool. Like I didn't take any sort of footage of the front, the inside, nothing. I didn't do anything there. At any rate, it was fantastic. I'm gonna input some sort of image of the front from Google or something so you can see it. They are awesome. So if you're around the Chicago area and you need a blade sharpened or something like that, or Festool equipment, and I believe they sell Merca now too. If you need anything like that, router bits, a mana tool, basically the best of the best type of equipment, that's what they carry. And you should go check them out. 3B Saw and Tool in Oak Park, at least for now. More on that a different time. But here we are, because I didn't get the footage, we are already at the shop and cash is already here say hi to the people cash no come on cash how about high five the people high five the people high five yes good girl okay welcome to griffin projects headquarters or workshop or something myspace all by myself here's the front door you see right here and then as we go from the front door, we go to like basically my gallery space. It's the corner. It looks awesome. It's all the pieces that I've done and things or things I have around that are basically done, that type of thing. But then from this angle, you see the rest. And that's right, representing Chi Town with the flag. I think it's a must, you know, type of thing. For some reason, a Chicagoans, very proud of that flag. But then, once again, I know I already showed you the most embarrassing part of my apartment. Now I'm gonna show you the most embarrassing part of this workshop, which is right here. Oh man, can you see this? The material storage. Yeah. I think it's a running theme with me is that I just don't have enough like actual storage areas. And you think, Griffin, you have a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> with all this great woodworking equipment. Why don't you do something about it? 
that's a point well taken, a point that I hear. And I also tell myself that very often. We're gonna get there. That's why I designed that kitchen cabinet yesterday. So if you haven't seen yesterday's Vlogmas, make sure you check that out. At any rate, let's get back to the tour. The tour here is one of my favorite awesome Craigslist purchases. It is the Powermatic 15 inch planer. It's not a helical head, it's just an old school, awesome 220 volt planer. And I love that thing. I think that's gonna be also a running thing with this shop tour is I pretty much like every tool and love every tool that I bought. I am a huge researcher and yeah, at any rate. So here we have this awesome, awesome <laughs> outfit table. Okay, yeah, it's not that awesome, but don't worry. Guess what's coming up soon? We're gonna get there. <laughs> so now if we get, go around this material storage, we come to the heart of most shops and that would be the table saw. The table saw is, like I said, it's the mainstay of most shops, the ver most versatile tool, I think, or most powerful tool, or most consistent tool, or something. Anyway, I have a video on the Jessam stock guides. Still love them. If I can use them, I always do. It's pretty much part of my workflow now. Underneath, you see all my fest tool crap. That's right, all the stuff. Actually, one of the first power tools beyond a drill is this one, the Fest Tool Track Saw 75, TS75. And, you know, I still love, love using it. I use it pretty much for all my kerf work, like kerf wood bending work. And I don't know, if you don't have the money per se to get a nice table saw, I would say hold off on getting a cheap ass one and get a nice track saw because you know what? You can do a hell of a lot with that and a miter saw. Like, that is no joke. That's what I did a lot of stuff before I had some of this other equipment. Anyway, let's spin around. Ah, very nice. There it is. This is the miter saw. It is not a Hitachi anymore. It's a Metabo uh, miter saw. And I have an awesome story about getting this for like so, 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 so cheap. That's why I bought it. Of course, I would love the Fest, the Fest, ugh. of course, I would love the Festival Capex, but I've used that one a bunch. And honestly, you know, when it comes to miter saws, I think I'm with pretty much a lot of people when the major cut that I do on here is just straight up and down 90 degrees. And as long as that is true, that's very, very important. In fact, I very rarely tilt anything on that saw ever. So that's that. Of course, in this corner, got the, the Festool vac or dust collector, whatever. And then, you know, this old little barrel air compressor. It's loud as crap. And that will be handled at some point. Of course, those are almost finished Arc Series nightstands that I have in my bedroom right now. I really like that design a lot. So at any rate, those are almost done. Then in this corner, we got an actual shop vac, a shop vac. I just, you know, I know there's just a ton of different brands. They all do a quote unquote shop vac. But let me just tell you, I actually had a shop vac where the motor went out. And then I went ahead and called shop vac at their office. Someone actually picked up and then they said, okay, what model? Told them the model and we go, oh, okay. Yeah, we have a mortar in stock. We're going to ship it to you. And let me just tell you, that's something that's actually pretty rare. If you've done any sort of warranty type of things in the past before, you'll know that getting someone on the line, let alone taking and using your warranty is actually very, very difficult. But they didn't have me send a receipt. They didn't have me send this or that or blah, blah, blah. They just said, what's your address? We'll send you the motor. It'll be fine. And for that, I will always buy shop vac, always. Now to the dust collection. Now this is something that I think is probably one of the most important things in the shop. It's one of the first things that I set up. Um, not as nicely as I do have it now, but it was, you know, super, super important to have. The way I have it set up right now is I have it going up to a Y and this one will eventually go to tools over here. But right now it's just capped off, but it goes up and up and then over there 
and then down to the table saw and then going back up goes across the width of the shop and then is capped there that will eventually have a drop for the planer and possibly other machinery that will go right over here last and finally is my clamp rack now i just made this super super quick but you know what i love it it's holding up there which is to say something is freaking awesome so anyway i guess i did something right when it came to this i have made these where they literally fall off the wall so that was quite the experience not fun to be underneath it which i was <laughs> at any rate let's go to the last part of vlogmas day three and that's going to be showing you what projects that i actually have in the shop right now and the first one is this this is a liquor cabinet the design you can see from here the computer rendering is pretty much what it is i mean a few little changes like we don't have the hole in the triangle door the only thing left on this is the top the top kind of had like a weird smudge or something, so I sanded it down and just gonna need a new bit of gray gel stain, which we will do soon. And then, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but you should, I am obsessed with this drawer. It's a push to open drawer and a slow close all at the same time. And that is actually really freaking sweet. And it is not that that common to be able to do both but thankfully Bloom makes them. They're very expensive. Not something that I would probably recommend. It is mainly, I think, a cool factor thing. Because I love the design of this piece, like it got some really nice hardware. Speaking of nice hardware, <laughs> the triangle door. Now, I asked a ton of woodworkers about what hinge to use here. And not a lot of them had a great answer. Um, what I ended up doing was using, you can see there, there's a piano hinge. It's not my favorite. I would not say like, yeah, I'm so happy about it, but it does work and it's not going to get a bunch of like super use. I don't think like it's going to mainly be like a storage cabinet or for like extra bottles or something like that or anything you just don't want out in the open will be in there. So I think we'll be okay with that. Haven't had any complaints yet. Now, the coffee table. This is an ash bent wood coffee table that I designed and built. And of course, it's using kerf bending, as you can see there. And let me just tell you, getting the actual uh, right angle here and there and there and there to equal each other, you know, like that's surprisingly difficult <laughs> when you're a human and you make like little bits of error and even though i really try hard with the track saw it still was something that it's within a degree though which you know i'm gonna pat myself on the back for that the last piece here in the shop is this small apartment liquor cabinet and and or cabinet i mean it could be used for anything but i have it set up like a bar and you can see going up and what's awesome about this piece is that the actual sides of this piece are the edge grain of Baltic birch. And if you know about Baltic birch, 18 millimeter Baltic birch has 11 layers. Now there's like 21 actual pieces to make up the panels of this carcass of this piece. And you know, if you take 11 times 21, it's like a bazillion lines, a bazillion and i love that about it a lot of extra work for that detail for such a sim simply designed or like minimal piece but i think it's freaking worth it and with that day three of vlogmas is over because you know what i have to edit this and get it out on day three it's very important to me so that's what i'm gonna do right now if you liked this video, would you please like it? I would really appreciate that. If you didn't like the video, but you're a nice person, I also appreciate that like. And if you want to hear and see what else is going on during Vlogmas for me, make sure that you subscribe to the channel Griffin Projects. That's this channel. And I am Griffin. And I want to say thank you so much for watching. And you know what? I will see you tomorrow.